Hi, welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we are going to talk about libraries. Not the library where we find books, this is the library where we find code. In Arduino and many, many other languages, one of the powers of object oriented programming, which is the kind of programming that we're looking at, is you can store code for other people to use or for you to use yourself in something called a library. And we can access that code and use the library of code for a particular thing and not have to know a whole lot about how it works. This idea is called black box abstraction. It's when you have code or any kind of thing really, like you could take for example a car and realize that you don't need to know how the car has to work down to the transmission and the um, fuel injection and all of those kinds of things in order to drive the car. You just need to know the rules of driving the car, about how it works to drive it, like how do you start it, how do you steer it, how do you accelerate? How do you slow down? How do you put on the turn signal? And of course, the all important, how do you program the clock? In C, we have, or in Arduino, we have those same kinds of libraries, only those are dealing with specific kinds of things that are more complicated, and we don't necessarily want to know every little bit about how they work. So today's example, the library we're going to look at is infrared remote control. You know those remotes that you use to control your TV? Well the way they work is they send out a signal called an infrared signal or an IR signal and your TV reads that signal. That single signal is actually a number. Then your TV uses that number to know what it's supposed to do. So it receives the number, it decodes the number, and then decides what it's supposed to do based upon that number, like uh, turn the channel, change the volume. So we're going to build our own little remote control project and look at how it works inside of Tinkercad and Arduino. So let's dive in and take a look. So here is our code that we have. Let me move this out of the way. You don't need to see me. There we go better. And in our code, we have some new things to talk about, new things that were not here before. So let's dive in and take a look. The first thing is this line of code way up here at the top, line number one. And it starts with a hashtag and says include. Then it has a less than symbol and then a greater than symbol surrounding the name of essentially a file and the name of the file is called irremote.h and in this file is code specifically what we would call a class not a class that we learn school in a class of information like an object uh, it is a thing that we can use in order to control an IR remote control. We don't need to know a whole lot more about how it works other than that because we're just going to include it. What we do need to know is basically how to steer it, right? How to start it and stop it and how to steer our program. You'll recognize the next couple lines. We're defining some variables. Red pin, yellow pin, green pin, blue pin, our LEDs, and then this thing here called receive pin this is going to be the pin responsible for receiving the IR signal. Now we need to have an IR device. So if we look at our design here and our circuit, you'll see that there is this little device down here. This is an infrared receiver. And it receives the infrared through that little bulb. And it looks like a bulb, looks like an LED, but it's not an LED, it's an infrared receiver. And we can find that over here, 
just by doing search for IR. And it should search in all components. Oops, I didn't mean to undo it. Let me see. If we scroll down, we should be able to find it. There it is, IR sensor right there. But you have to find it under all components. And then you can see there's other kinds of sensors too. All kinds of tons of sensors. All of these different sensors have built-in libraries that are associated with them inside of Arduino. We'll take a look at some of those in a little while. The other thing we're going to need is the actual IR remote. So if we look and scroll through, we should be able to find it in our list of things. And there it is. There's the IR remote. So we need these two things that are required in our circuit that we don't normally put into our circuit. Um, and of course, the LEDs like we're used to seeing. And you can see I have them wired in. If I can move this around. There we go. My four LEDs with my resistors and their pins respectively, five, four, three, and two. My ground wire and then this pin will go over to my first pin of my IR receiver, which is called the out pin. We need a ground for the IR receiver and a power for the IR receiver. Those are plugged into ground and five volts respectively. Let's go back and look at that code. So now we have all the, the built-in circuit part for our project. Let's go in and see what are the stuff that the IR library requires. So the first thing we're going to do is set up some um, variables and use some um, structures that we're not used to seeing. So we'll go through this. Line number nine is kind of interesting. What it does is it builds a thing. It's called an IR receiver. It's a instance of a class, if we're going to use the correct terminology, and it creates an object that we can control. And now that object is more than just a variable. Uh, the IR receiver is going to be the ability to receive data and decode that data and know what those numbers mean depending upon what buttons we press on the remote. We don't need to know how it works, we just need to know that it's going to work. So often when you're looking up a library, this is the kind of thing you want to find out. What are the things you need to declare in order to make the library work? The next thing we're going to do is create another variable called results. And it's of a special type called decode results. Again, this is part of the library. Results is not just a variable, it turns out results is another object. It's another thing. We recognize these, our pin modes. Red, yellow, green, blue. We have our serial monitor that we're going to start. And we're going to print out that we're just receiving it. And then now we have this new command called irreceive.enableirin. This is again part of the library. We are telling the receiver that we're ready to receive a signal. Okay, if the IR receiver gets a value, that's what we're testing here. Now, we have this weird thing where we have an ampersand in front of results. That's a little bit more complicated about what it does, but again, it's one of those things that you need for the library. And essentially, it's saying, tell me where in memory the results are. That's what that little ampersand does in front of the variable. It's essentially what's called a pointer and telling the uh, decoder to look in memory for those results rather than taking the values directly using something called a dot value method. So we can see right here, we do that later and we assign the value to a variable called value and that's coming from results.value. Again, it's a thing and it has methods. We're going to print the value on the screen and then we're going to use a switch case. Now the switch case we looked at a while ago and it's a way of comparing one particular value to a bunch of different numbers. And this is weird, 2295. 
and then 34935, and then 18615. Well, these are the numbers that are associated with pressing buttons on the IR remote. So when I press a button, it sends a value, and in this case, this first case, it's 2295. And if it receives that value of 2295, we're just going to turn the red light on and then turn it off. And then we're going to do the same thing with the yellow light, the green light, and the blue light. And then we have one where it turns them all on and then turns them all off. Then we have to run this again, another requirement of the library is we have to just tell the IR receiver, okay, get ready to get the next value. And that's it. All we're doing is checking values and doing something with them on the screen. Now we can also print out the value. See this right here, serial.print value. This is printing this number, this 2295 on the screen. So we can actually see what all the other different buttons do and how they appear or the numbers, the values they have when we actually run the code. So I'm going to set this up so we can actually run it. Ah. There we go. Let's start the simulator. And I'm going to open up the serial monitor so we can see the values that are coming through. Maybe. There we go. Serial monitor, it says enabling IR in, and then it says it's enabled IR in. So you can see that down at the bottom. I'll move my remote just over a little bit. So when I press the number one, I can see I get a red, but then I can also see the value of 2295 appears down here on the right hand side. So I can make that a little bigger. Trying to get everything on the screen. When I press the number two, I get a yellow, and I get the number three, four, nine, three, five. I press the number three, I get a green, a four, I get a blue, and if I press a five, they all light up. And I can see I can keep getting these different numbers. But if I press other buttons on here, I still get numbers. They just don't do anything. Why? Because they're not programmed to do anything. So a six gives me that number two, six, seven, seven, five. A seven gives me the number of six five five three five sorry six three seven five and then an eight you can see the numbers give me three nine zero one five you notice sometimes there's like a little artifact where it picks up a weird number that it didn't expect um, this is one of the things when you're dealing with sensors it may not get the actual value immediately so you may have to press it once, which would explain why sometimes on your remote, when you press the button, it doesn't quite work immediately. Uh, that's the reason why. So we can test out all these different buttons and we could program them all to do all different kinds of things uh, with our LEDs, but they can also do different kinds of things with other devices that are connected to our Arduino. So this becomes a real powerful way of controlling your Arduino in the real world using a remote control, which is really kind of important. So that way you don't have to disconnect and reconnect your Arduino every time. And it'd be nice if you could use it. Maybe you're using it to change the mood lighting of an LED string that's behind your television. So that could be really kind of fun and cool to do. So this is the code and I'll post this along with this circuit design so you can go ahead and give this a try. That's all we have for you today. I'll see you next time.